This is the Alpha Sessions and I'm Emma and I'm here with the amazing Sassin Beige. Hiya. Hello, how you doing? Really well. I want to be introduced as the amazing Sassin Beige every time from now on. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> we should make it a thing. Maybe you should change it's your like, social yeah. handles to the, the amazing Sassin Beige. Like, be great. like the amazing Spider-Man, but with the cello. <laughs> And without the superpowers. You've just like <laughs> painted this amazing picture of Spider-Man climbing a wall with a cello. Yeah, That'd I can picture awesome. it. I can't like that. <laughs> Away from Spider-Man and back to you, Dave. <laughs> um, how did the music thing start for you? Well, I was talking about this with my mum yesterday. I didn't really pick to play the cello. I was just kind of one of those kids that just did as I was told. So I think I got asked, do I want to play it? And I just said, yeah, because... I said yeah to anything and carried on <laughs> pretty much. It's not it's not an exciting story of oh, I had a burning passion to play it my whole life. It wasn't anything but like that. But cello is quite random. It's not your standard. I mean, I would kind of see there's probably a big three instrument, mm. if you like. And I wouldn't see necessarily cello being part of that. And I think even now in twenty nineteen, someone sees a cello, they're like, Oh wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's a cello. Yeah. Or they say, Oh, is it a double bass? I'm like, nope. <laughs> it's always smaller than a double bass. Right, let's get this straight. How do you identify the difference between a double bass and a cello? If it's bigger than you, it's a double bass. Okay. That's, that's, the, <laughs> that's the rule, definition. yeah. If it's not bigger than you and it's you're like, Well, that's definitely not a violin, then it's a cello. Okay. I don't know how you would tell the difference between a viola and a cello in a case though, so can't help you on that one. <laughs> okay, we'll ask someone else about that one. But thanks for the uh, clarification. Um, now, I did some digging around online, um, as I do before someone comes in. Uh-oh. And something I noticed <laughs> is that you've started a hashtag, um, a chick and a cello. Yeah. Um, how did that come about? And that, that's actually really cool. <laughs> I actually can't remember, but I feel like it was probably in the pub and I was joking about it and then thought, that's actually good. I'm going to use that. I can't really remember where it came from. I just just started using it because it sounded good. Yeah. It and it was it was actually because would, people would post pictures of me and not remember my name and then I couldn't find them like to like repost or anything. So I was like, if you put the hashtag a chick on and a cello, then I'll be able to find it. So I put, <laughs> if I put, <laughs> If I put that in, I find all these pictures. So you of me actually where people start searching my name for yourself as a chick in a jelly. Yeah, that's really. Which cool. makes me sound like really vain. I've just realised that I'm just like going on the internet looking for pictures of myself. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what is it that you love about the cello the most? Um, I don't know. I guess it's because it's my first instrument. It feels kind of more natural than a guitar because that's the other thing I write on. Oh wow. Um, but it also makes you write differently because you don't, it's not as easy to play chords and the chords that you've got access to that are easy yeah. are different than a guitar. So it kind of makes you write in a different way and it always sounds a bit more jazzy on the cello because yeah. kind of use it a bit like a double bass. But quite like that. I quite like that it makes me write differently and it just feels nice. It feels like you've got a friend with you on stage oh. <laughs> when you've got a cello because it's like, Less it's like cuddling it. Yeah. Um, now, we put a um, a big kind of statement on our Twitter basically saying that you were coming in and that if anybody wanted any questions, then they could get in touch. Um, we had quite a few questions um, and I'm not going to, I'm going to kind of like interweave them into our chat okay. if that's right with you. Yeah. Um, the first one being, um, when you write your songs, do you write them on guitar or do you write them with cello? The ones that are on the cello, I yeah. write on the cello, the ones that I I like play on the guitar. Usually they start on the guitar. Sometimes they start on the cello. But what comes first? This sounds um, like a weird chicken and egg thing. What comes first, the lyrics or the writing on the instrument? Together. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I don't think I could separate them. It's usually a bit of both. It has been times where I've had, I'll have the idea of like a sort of a baseline thing with a melody on top and then I have to go and see if I can actually play the thing on the cello. So I get, but I, I, usually they come together, like melody and chords or bass line. They kind, yeah, I couldn't say which comes first. They kind of, come together. yeah. And where does the inspiration come from? I don't know, just life <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> anything. Um, I usually my own experiences, but sometimes when I think someone's misunderstood what I've said, a lot of the time that will, I'll write a song and think, how can I explain this better? Or it's like, oh, I wish I'd have said that before. Does that happen a lot? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I think that's quite good because it means that you write a lot of songs. Yeah. Not all good songs, but yeah, a lot of songs. Um, and are they often based on like sad or angry things or are they happier? 
Uh, a bit of both. I tend to try not to write too many miserable songs because mm. I find that a lot of people think it's like therapeutic, but usually if I write a song like that, it puts me more into the mood. <laughs> the Fair enough. So I try and I don't really play that many sad or angry songs on stage because I'm like, I don't think I want to put that out into the world. Although people seem to like that. So I'm thinking of maybe slipping a few more into the set. Yeah. Um, but for me, I I like to write about happier things because it makes me feel happier because when you're writing, you have to think about the thing. Yeah, of course. So... I'd rather think about happy things. <laughs> Wouldn't we all? Um, so your latest single, Just Being Me, that mm. you released towards the end of last year, um, I checked that out recently and it makes me want to be on a beach with some palm trees, <laughs> sipping <laughs> on too. a cocktail and having a little dance. Um, I really like it. Tell us a little bit about what that was about and how you got to writing that song. Okay. So I remember writing the chorus. All I had was the chorus of it. At the train station, it just kind of... I was waiting for a train, I had nothing to do. So I was just had this idea in my head and I actually sent it to my brother. So I did a rough record of it because he likes to write raps. And I was like, I feel like this would be a good like hook for a rap. Hang on, so your brother writes raps. You he's gonna, he's not gonna be happy with me saying this. And your like, no, sister <laughs> um, also has a company G on the session. You're quite yeah. a musical family. Yeah. Well, he writes raps, but he won't like perform them to anyone. Oh, okay. Um, but this was me trying to get him to, to do something. Um, so he, basically sent it back and said you write a rap for it and I was like well, I can't rap so that's why it sounds quite it's quite fast because I wrote basically wrote a rap thinking that maybe he would rap it and then he was said you do it and I can't rap so I just sang it really fast and sang, <laughs> or sang rhythmically I guess you could say yeah. um so it was about it was about being mistaken for coming from places or having connections to places that I don't have any connection to, which right. happens quite a lot. And it's usually to do with how my hair is, whether it's braided, whether I've got it straightened, if it's like, like an afro, people will like make assumptions about where I'm from. Right. But to the point that people would be convinced that like I can speak Spanish or I should speak Spanish yeah. or I've got some connection to South America or that I've got like Indian, one parent's Indian, and they're like so convinced about it. They'll be asking me, Where are you from? And I say England, and they're like, No, but where are you really from? I'm like, In England. <laughs> that sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you find that quite frustrating? I find it funny more than anything. Yeah. It doesn't upset me. Um, that's why I put that, made sure to put that line in the song. I'm yeah. not offended, don't think I'm upset. It's not an angry song. It's just, I just find it funny, but it's yeah. also that people do that all the time like making judgments about so you presumptuous. yeah and it's like yeah but you do you just don't know and if i say i'm from england that means i was born here and the countries that you're like oh your mum must be from here or your dad's from here yeah. and i'm like neither of them are they're both born <laughs> they're both born here just english yeah that's not as exciting as you want me to be <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i think maybe there's this kind of built up imaginary um perception that isn't necessarily a thing and that yeah it's quite largely to yourself yeah, and also that the other thing was about being made to choose black or white. Right. <laughs> when you get put in a situation where you've got a form and you've got to fill it in, and I'm not, I never know what to put because I'm like, well, I'm not. I don't think I'm black British. I wouldn't consider myself that. And if we're putting mixed, they want you to just say like black white. But then my granddad's Jewish, so then what do I like? How do I? So I just put mixed other, and then they're like, please state. I'm like, no, because. <laughs> Right, write all the heritage that I know of Yeah. why do you need to know this tell me why you need to know and then I'll tell you the answer that yeah. you need otherwise it ends up being like there's one one eighth this yeah. and a quarter this and then a half this and you're like okay well, but I don't even know what they want me to put on the form because I'm looking at it and I'm like what What do you want me to put because I would say there's no right answer there. there's not and do you know what they never have on the form they never have white and black British as a mix because I'm like maybe I could maybe I could tick that yeah. possibly yeah. I'd still feel like it's not quite right but maybe I could tick that but that's never that you have to be black Caribbean mixed black Caribbean and Caucasian I'm like that like implies that one of my parents comes from like Jamaica or something like yeah. has come and I'm fir like the first generation born here which I'm not so yeah. <laughs> I can't tick that because it feels like lying yeah <laughs> yeah it just gets very complicated no other is fine <laughs> He calls me Tiger Cause I'm always on the prowl And I never seem to be satisfied I'm a hunter I 
I'm always ready for the kill. He can see the hunger there in my eyes. Yeah, he knows I'm addicted. Cause I can't get enough. And I won't give it up. Yeah, maybe I'm addicted to the natural high from the drug he supplies. I'm just a junkie, only live for the next hit. But the problem is I always calm down. And he knows that I'll be back for my next fix. Didn't take him long to figure me out. Yeah, he knows I'm addicted. Cause I can't get enough. And I won't give it up. Yeah, he knows I'm addicted. To the natural high from the drug he supplies. I'm addicted. at the moment that you can tell us about uh i'm working on (laughs) (laughs) i'm working on oh i've got a big gig coming up in liverpool on the 22nd of june i'm opening africa oea which is like a massive festival amazing yeah i saw that um you're on the lineup i first of all is that your first festival it's my no i played i've played smaller festivals in liverpool before but not I feel like maybe I'm getting this wrong and I've forgotten something, but no, I've never, I've never opened as myself. I've played with other people at yeah. festivals. That's why, that's why I'm getting confused here. But I've never like played on a stage that big where it's my gig. <laughs> it's so, cool though. What's yeah. Africa LA like? Uh, I've never been to it before, which oh, okay. is bad. But it's, uh, it's like um, I have a lot of, I guess you'd call it black music. I hate that term, but like a lot of um, acts from like all over, right? Like a lot from America and from. Africa and it's like all all different types of quote unquote black music. Yeah. Um. So, so it's a celebration of that kind of music, Afrobeat, okay. and I think they've like even got blues and stuff. So literally anything. Nice. Yeah. And um, you're playing yourself. That makes it sound like you're in a film. But I mean, <laughs> like on the stage. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And you're also in the line like with Tabitha Jade, who's also a fellow half sessions artist. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, she's playing the day after. I think she's opening the day up on the Sunday, I think she's yeah. playing, yeah. So do you play on stage with the full band? Not usually, but I am for this. So that's what Ooh. I'm working on. Because I've so never actually this played band... in a full band before like that. Ah. <laughs> what does this band entail? It'll be drums, bass, me on cello and guitar. Then we've got a guy on guitar and keys. Nice. So, and then I'll probably have backing tracks with that as well, just to get a bit more of the bass end in because that's what I'm all about <laughs> with the bass so end how, So how does that work when you're given a slot like that and you decide that you want to play with a band? What mm. is it that um, makes you make the decision of um, what kind of instruments and what kind of sound you want to feature in that? Um, so a lot of this is based off the recordings that I've done okay. already. Yeah. So and you then, try and emulate that or you try and make it sound a bit different? Try and get the essence of that. Right. So... Uh, well, that why I had keys in is because you can just press a button and make it sound like something else. <laughs> right um, so that's that was always like one. I was like, if I can have that, that yeah. would be good. The bass, there's bass on every track. There's there's drums on every track, and I play guitar on a lot of them, and then the cello. But then I was thinking, if I'm playing the cello and I want a guitar, it'd be better to have that than to have it on a backing track when I've got drums and bass live. Yeah, fair enough. Um, the backing track, because. Oh, well, unless my sister wants to come play with me. I haven't asked her about this yet. Is that a hint? Because your <laughs> sister's watching, so that could be an invitation. Yeah, if, if she's not, though, all the strings would be, other than like what I'm playing, would have to be on backing track. Yeah. And I don't I don't really want to take those out because it's kind of, I quite like having that in my songs. It's kind of, you know, it's like the bit I love. That's my weak spot is strings. 
Aww. so if I can have them I want them <laughs> so you are doing the session with your sister yeah my little sister Elodie who's actually an amazing violinist um, she was on BBC Young Musician the last one that's just gone so amazing. she's yeah she's the um, the real <laughs> the real musician <laughs> No, you're both real musicians. Yeah, but she's the she's a classical one, is what I mean. If you, yeah, proper. I'm really lucky to have her play for me for like free, basically. <laughs> <laughs> she's not using you, honest. <laughs> <laughs> you used to call me on my cell phone, lay down when you need my love. Call me on my cell phone, lay down when you need my love. But I don't know when the hell I'm bling. It can only mean one thing Yeah, I know and I hold and bling It can only mean one thing Cause ever since I left the city, you know I got a reputation for myself now And everybody knows you're feeling left out But boy, you had me tripping, had me stressed out Cause ever since I left the city, you know I started wearing less and going now more Stepping on champagne out on the dance floor Chilling with some chicks you never knew before You used to call me on my cell phone Late night when you need my love Call me on my cell phone Play night when you need my love But I know when the hell I'm bling It can only mean one thing Yeah, I know when the hell I'm bling It can only mean one thing Ever since I left the city You was blowing up my cell phone But I was stupid, maybe Cupid had me stressing out But you're crazy if you think I do the same thing now I waited when you sat there making up your mind And boy, didn't you just take your sweet ass time But I was stupid, maybe Cupid had me tripping out But you're crazy if you think I do the same thing now You used to call me on my cell phone Okay, so this is a, another question from um, Operation Lightfoot, who got in touch via Twitter, and their question is, what's been your most enjoyable gig to date? Oh, man, that's so hard. Big question. Uh, most enjoyable? I don't know. There have been so many good ones. I think the one, one that I always think of and I don't know if this is the most enjoyable but I did have a lot of fun was I was playing in Leicester um supporting Roachford don't know if you remember Roachford yeah <laughs> and I just had so much fun that night it was like a it was different because on that tour a lot of them were sit down ones mm. so I think it might might have been the first one where it was standing and the crowd was just loving it they were just, they'd all probably had a bit to drink before they got there. <laughs> Who, wait, you or them? Them, not okay, me. Just... <laughs> um, and they were just like dancing and it was just, not, it just felt like a party. Yeah. Nice. It was a good gig. Because most of my gigs are, the audience are quite quiet. I'm yeah. used to, to that. What do you prefer? Like a larger venue with a more kind of raucous audience or a smaller venue with a more chilled vibe? Uh... It really depends on what I'm doing. If I'm playing acoustic, obviously I yeah. want a quieter crowd. Yeah. Um, when I think somewhere in between, okay. it, dep it depends whether they're like with you or if they're ignoring you. You know, <laughs> so if it's like <laughs> raucous and they're not interested, then it's kind of like, okay, we just get through the set, like because yeah. you know your background music and no one really cares. What Do you you're get doing. a lot of that, or quite a bit. It yeah. depends where you play, because in in Liverpool now, because that's where I play more often yeah. I tend to not have that problem so much okay. but when I play other places you yeah. just don't know what you're walking into and if you're on a lineup of other acts a lot of the time it's that we've got three or four people on it's not a headliner it's just everyone plays their set yeah. and I don't know what the other bands are and I'm just the wrong the wrong genre people um, and they're noisy it's hard because you're having to win them over Yeah. so then sometimes it's nicer to go into a venue which is there's actually less people there and so they will, when there's less people and you walk in with a cello, they will be quiet because they just are like, what? what's this? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> why, why she bring it? It each becomes other, a feature of your set, kind yeah. of. Yeah, which is quite cool. Yeah. Um, so you're obviously at uni in Manchester. Yeah. Um, but you also spend quite a lot of time down here in London. Mm-hmm. Um, how would you compare the two music industries? Um, Manchester. I don't know. I haven't played in Manchester that much. Yeah. I'm usually playing Liverpool. Manchester. I find every time I've played there, I've had a good gig. People like always are very interested in it. I always get people come up to talk to me afterwards and they yeah. will actually come back to gigs and they follow me on social media and they do the things they say Is they're the going to do. Is the scene a lot smaller? Or? In Manchester, no, it's bigger. Okay. It's, yeah. I think that, that it's, because it's a student, well, it's not a student city, but there's a lot of universities there, mm-hmm. which helps. <laughs> students are like receptive to, I find Other students. To, yeah. yeah. Um, Liverpool, is different because it's a, like the whole Beatles thing is still yeah. very alive and well there. So the guitar band thing. So I always I always think if I'm going into a gig kind of blind, so I don't know what it is that I'm going on with. I'm usually usually better bet in Manchester than Liverpool. Okay, interesting. Yeah, but but Liverpool it's so cheap to go out in Liverpool. Like you can go to a gig every night. I think that's part of what the problem is because there's so many bands and there's yeah. so many good bands yeah. that it's just, people can't take it for granted there, I feel like. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but how would you compare that to London? To London? Lon- I don't know. I can't, London's so big, it feels yeah. an unfair comparison because it's like, how many Manchesters can you fit in London? <laughs> <laughs> Quite a lot. That sounds like a really big maths question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, I don't want to answer that. I don't want to. Don't don't ask me for the answer. I've got no idea. But so London feels like it's like loads of different music industries in it. Yeah, doesn't feel as joined up, which is, oh, well, yeah. There's different like different pockets of things in London, which I quite like because I feel like it's easier to find your place if you want to yeah. if you're here. Yeah. But I don't think I've been in London enough or like consistently enough to really work out where that is yet. So okay, all in good time. Yeah, <laughs> is the plan to eventually move down to London? Or? Who knows? I don't know. It's it's more expensive. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> when you go south, it, the, the further south you go, the more expensive it gets. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so another question from Operation Lightfoot then. Do you have any dream venues that you'd love to play or artists that you'd like to support? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put this on air now because I want to say this. Ages. Zach said. And I went to his gig and gave him a CD and I know he hasn't listened to it. Do you know who he is? <laughs> no, I don't actually. <laughs> He's really good. He's like a, what would you call it? It's like R&B. Zach said. Yeah. Okay. It's like R and B, no, it's R and B. Yeah, he like plays guitar and sings, and nice. I think he programs everything himself. And I just like, I just really love him, and I really oh, want to support. Him. <laughs> and um, um, dream venue anywhere in the world? Anywhere in the world, wow. I'd really like to play. Do you know what I'd like to play? Actually, I'd really like to play the Sage Gateshead, which I've played before, but I want to yeah. be on as the main act <laughs> nice. on the big stage headline. <laughs> yeah, because okay, cool. the sound in there was great and the yeah. staff in there were great yeah. and people from Newcastle were just lovely so yeah so, <laughs> this leads to a question that I often ask um, towards the end of the interview but mm. now that we've kind of gone down that road I feel like it's appropriate to <laughs> ask it now um, if you could have any dream rider um, before a gig this dream gig that you're collaborating with uh, mm. Zach said in the Sage and Gateshead um, <laughs> what could you have like what would you request before you went on stage or after um, anything goes I mean we've had anything from gyms to goats to tequila to anything I <laughs> don't nothing really super malt okay um, <laughs> that's about it really wow. I, or a quiet dressing room where like people can't just walk in because I don't like it before a gig when people like want to come in it's like someone's friend wants to come in yeah. and then you feel like you have to say yeah because you don't want to be a diva but really all you want to do is think about what your set list is and all yeah. of that and that's it well, I'm not really a diva I don't really no nah, I'm just sort of happy if my if it sounds good on stage and I can hear myself I'm, I'm pretty happy that's kind of all I want and is there any kind of rituals you have to do before a gig mm, not so much anymore I used to not like playing with my shoes on Okay. <laughs> so I used to always want to like... There's a lot of artists that do that. Yeah, to like feel the ground. But yeah. I don't really do that so much anymore. So now we keep the shoes on. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, not really. I kind of feel like I never have a quite enough space to have developed any <laughs> proper ones, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> People always trying to like talk to you and ask you things. Yeah. So, no, not really. Okay. Um, another question from Operation Lightfoot. Um, they're keeping them coming in. Um, any new recordings in the pipeline? Um, oh, there. Let me think. Well, 
yeah, I've got a couple of tracks that are with a producer now. We just did a really rough recording, okay. and then he's turning them into something else and then see how that sounds. Right. Because Being Me, my last single, was quite yeah. different than everything else. Mm. So it's like, do I carry on doing that sound, or mm. is it... That song had to be like that. There were so many incarnations of that song, and we were trying to fight against it being sounding like a kind of like a carnival song. Right. <laughs> but in the end, I was like, no, it just is. It is a carnival song. That's yeah. how I wrote it. Let's just go with it and just do it. So it's now, do I carry on doing that, or is it just for that track? So that's what I'm trying do to like figure out. Do like a carnival out. album? That'd be cool. Yeah, carnival with a cello. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually love to do that. That'd be so awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so that's at the moment. I think when I get those back, then we'll decide, is it? Because it's either that or yep. more towards the like jazz thing. Yep. What I find is a lot of people asking me, can you just do like acoustic recordings with you and the cello? Which I never did, ever thought of, because I thought no one would really want to buy that. Mm. But people keep asking. So I'm thinking maybe just do that and then be like, if you want to buy it, you can buy it. <laughs> if you, really if cool. you like maybe. the songs like that. Yeah, absolutely. That in addition to other stuff. Yeah, guess, yeah. yeah. Cool, so... Um, that's obviously coming up for you as an artist, which is really cool. Um, I'm sure we would love to see an EP of some sort, maybe. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if people want to find out more about you, where can they go? What can they do? Um, I'm on all the usual places. So Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. As the amazing Satin Beige. <laughs> <It's, laughs> you have to put in Miss Satin Beige. But I think if you if you put in hashtag a chicken a cello, into Google, it will throw me up, I think. <laughs> That's really cool. I thought you were going to write, if you put in the amazing satin base, then i If I'm you put that up. in, maybe it will now. <laughs> I'm going to upload this and search for that and put that happens. as a tag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for great. having me. Seven, and I'm feeling just like I'm in heaven Cause I'm laying next to you You, ooh, 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 yeah It was ten to eleven When you took me up to bed I'm in heaven As the thought runs through my head It's just too good to be true, yeah so the situation's come and I got a little love drunk, baby, won't you come and save me? So the situation's come and I got a little love drunk, baby, won't you come and save me now? No, no, yeah, 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 yeah. feel like an angel, I can fly You got me feeling high I, 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 yeah. And suddenly gravity doesn't seem to have an effect on me I feel like I can touch the sky yeah. So the situation's come and I got a little love drunk, baby, won't you come and save me? So the situation's come that I got a little love drunk, baby, won't you come and save me now? No, no, yeah, 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 yeah. A little love drunk, baby, won't you come and save me now?